All right, guys, we are live. We had a bit of a mess up on the time schedule for tonight, but I wanted to have James Larson back because he just attended the uh, Expona show for 2022. So I wanted James to give us his experiences on the different loudspeakers that he heard or different audio electronics that he heard. Uh, we're going to do a little slide presentation on that. And then, James, you're going to do like a short write-up that's going to go on the audioholics.com website correct yes yes we'll have some written coverage a little bit later but um my, i can't do it like a whole article in like one day so like we'll have yeah. to well why yeah. not man come on it should have been already written there i'm kidding yeah well uh i i would need one of those like text voice to text you know like transcriber things you know for right that, but so what did you go do you, did you go for one day or did you go for two days to the show I went for two days. The show was actually three days. I went for two because I just couldn't get all three. But um, I got what I needed to see. Uh, I pretty much covered the entire show, so I, you know, I I saw what what they had. I didn't need that third day. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Well, here I'm gonna share the slideshow here, and if you guys want, you know, more access to this little PowerPoint that James did. It'll be on our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholic. So please check it out there. Oh, that's the end. <laughs> yeah, I know. I got to be spoiled it. A spoiler alert. Damn. No. <laughs> that's the final slide. There we go. That's the first slide. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. How, this is just the highlights. This is just some of uh, the more interesting exhibits that I saw. This uh, little presentation we're giving like here. a giant line array there. Yeah, those are some big old line arrays. Um, and like... So like I mean this is just a few of the things I saw at the show that I think is worth like mentioning in a, in a little YouTube video. There was a lot there, so like yeah. you know, I can't I can't possibly cover it all or even like what I thought were, were among the better like you know exhibits. So these are just some cool stuff and some of the more um, interesting things you know. Right, legacy. So, all right. Yeah. First off, legacy. Right. Um, they're all they always have a great uh, put on a great room and um. They had in here there's the Aries, the Focus. We did actually a review of the Focus SEs back in like I think 2013. Right. And um, but the one new thing they brought to the show this year was um uh now the focuses are fully active. They're they're powered speakers now. So like, oh okay, I didn't know they did that with the focus. Yeah, now yeah, well, it's it is a brand new thing. And um, so now if you buy a focus, you don't have to supply your own amp they will supply one for you and their amps are very powerful so you'll have all so the amp is the amp on a rack mountable lamp or is the amp built into this cabinet of the speaker i believe they're built in uh you know i didn't even check <laughs> no i i'm pretty sure they're built in and uh it's it's a lot of power so like you don't yeah really and, and they have you know some really good class d amps you don't need you're not gonna have yeah they use the there. latest generation of ice module i know uh, they were developing that when i went to visit them years ago uh for the valor series and it was a great sounding amp so i could imagine this would be really impressive yeah speaking of the valors i guess if you if you click one more to the next slide there, oh there you go yeah we, we heard the valors there and what they they did an interesting demo for me um so you know how they have that like wavelet analysis module yep. by bomer right or you know they sent your like the data to like switzerland right and it gets analyzed and you get a, like a, a kind of a room correction curve that corrects for in both frequency and time right um they had this app where they were turning it on and off for us so we could hear the difference like a, a really rapid a b switching you know yeah and um and, and some in some cases it was mild but in other cases it was very uh apparent right that the differences that this, this room correction makes so that was pretty cool of them to show that uh that uh give that little demonstration and it's really easy to do with our app i think i might have thrown a slide in there with our app uh, I, go to the next slide okay yeah there, there's the app you can control a whole lot with the, any of their speakers with their app by the way all their speakers yep. now all of them are um can be room corrected using that like bomer um room correction that wavelet analysis room correction so every every single speaker they had like four or five pairs of speakers there and they all had this um this equalization thing running i guess equalization is almost too simple simplistic to say what it's doing you know it's uh it, it's just uh like a it's it, it's more than just mere equalization this uh this like room correction they're doing 
So, so how did the uh, how did the Valor sound to you? Was it? I mean, was the room good, or was it you couldn't tell because the bad acoustics? The or room, did they actually the room sound isn't really good? good because it's a it had a very large room, right? It looks huge, like, yeah. Yeah, big, huge conference room, right? So the acoustics were subpar, but the room correction really helped. You know, um, yeah, no, the Valor is sounding good. I mean, I've heard them before, and they sound fantastic then. They sound fantastic now. You know, they, yeah. they take a lot of the room out of the equation. With, with this uh, room correction that they're doing. Um, and they're not cheap speakers, of course. They're 80, 80, 80 grand eight, at least. Yeah, 86 grand. Yeah. yeah. So like, it's it's uh, expensive, but it's it's a lot of speaker for the mic. You know that. You you went to their headquarters here in Illinois. Yeah, I know. I loved it. It was one of the best speakers. I One of the best super speakers that I've been experienced to. So, and I've been, I've heard quite a few. So that says a lot. Yeah. Okay. And then, okay. And then, um, next door to them, or oh, this is two two rooms down, was the Dynaudio room. These are the uh, Confidence yeah. 60s, right? Really, really cool speakers. They're rocking some big old uh, octave monoblock amps. There are the, the big, huge Class A tube, you know, monster amps. Uh, and it sounded really good. I mean, Dynaudio, uh, their speakers are just, they're a reliably good manufacturer. They always make like really accurate, powerful you know, speakers. And these are, I, th I think right now, these are the flagships of their entire, you know, all the speakers they make. And so, so they, they use an MTM, huh? A WMTMW, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Basically it's, it's that kind of topology. Uh, I don't know how closely they adhere to that Diapolito kind of like crossover scheme where he gets that, the vertical dispersion that, you know, he really wants. There's a lot of ways you could arrange MTMs. Um, yeah, via the crossover, but they, they just sounded good, and I think, I think they're they're probably if you measured them, they would be as flat as a pancake, like like most of other Dynaudio speakers. Yeah, so, they look good. I like the outriggers on them; it looks pretty nice. They are forty thousand a pair, so <laughs> you know, they're it's a it's a cool speaker. Not they don't give them away though. You know, it's it's a little they're not giving little, them away. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, they've so, always been kind of pricey. As yeah. A brand. And they're not manufactured in China. I think they're manufactured like uh, somewhere in Europe. I think like mm -hmm. Scandinavia. I can't remember exactly Surpri where. I'm surprised they didn't have any active speakers on display because they have an active speaker that I heard years ago that I really liked. Well, they do make studio monitors, and so they're not, not at all new to like active speakers. Um, I think these are passive. They're, most of their home audio speakers are passive, but like like so many other manufacturers, I, I'm sure they're getting into like active speakers for home audio too instead of just pro yeah. audio jesus so, look at the size of those amplifiers that's just ridiculous <laughs> wait wait till you see some of the other amps that that yeah like here's the uh contour 60s the audio contour 60s these are just a mere ten thousand a pair so you know this uh, is the pocket change compared to many others are those like, eight inch woofers i believe so yes an eight inch woofer i think a five mid-range yeah. and of course the dome tweeter um it's funny good. they got away from the triple tweeter remember they were doing that triple tweeter design on on their other flagship and now this, it looks like they're just using a single tweeter even on their flagship yeah that was a strange design and I, I i remember right one of the tweeters like the middle tweeter was kind of like a high past at, uh uh the, the two upper upper and lower tweeters were were, were um low past right Right. And they, they also had a phase difference, so they didn't cause low beam or something. They had a really peculiar design for that that speaker. That, I mean, that's I don't think that's a part of their offerings anymore. But yeah, that was an interesting speaker. I've heard that too at a, yeah. at a past show. So th this is, I mean, these are really good speakers. I mean, and I'm glad really that they got their tweeter height higher because I remember their old flagship had like a tweeter that the whole driver way was upside down, and if you weren't sitting, the tweeter was way too low to the ground. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, that's right. That you had a it, it's like it was like this but upside down i remember yeah that. it was bizarre I, I it looks like they're doing more conventional stuff now so yeah it's always been good as far as i i've heard a lot of the speakers and they've i've always i'd like to get one in for review someday but um you know yeah, maybe we maybe we can definitely do that yeah I'm, something i can handle i can't handle these speakers though these are much much too large and heavy so <laughs> these were 10 grand a pair you said yeah these are 10 grand a pair and, i mean um, in this day and age for a, a giant tower like that that's for high end that's pretty reasonable yeah it's i think it's a good deal dynaudio it's, it's they're reliable reliably good manufacturer yeah so, you now look at those amps if you want to see an amp now let me i'm trying to figure out is that focal 
Yeah, th those are the Fakal and Walls. Those are Utopia. Let's see, those are called the 1000 IWLCR Utopia yeah. and Walls, right? Well, that's yeah. the top part. And then those, that, like three, those three base drivers below, that's their um, in wall sub. So they've got a triple driver subwoofer below these um, W, I mean, MTM W in walls. Yeah. And it sounded really good. And um, here you can see it was driven by <laughs> by the, the a name statement, right? You, you, I mean, do you know about this thing, right? I'm sure you've, you've heard about this thing. It's crazy. That, that's that amplifier that you wanted Matthew Pose to review, right? Yeah. <laughs> we still got to get this thing to them, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's only a quarter of a million dollars. I mean, it's not, it's okay, right? He can God, he can the size of that thing. I don't exactly remember the specs, but it's so far over the top that. It makes Boulder amps look small. It is giant. Well, the the two okay. There, you see how it's kind of three modules. The yeah. inner module is the the preamplifier. So this is not just an amplifier. It's a preamplifier flanked by two mono blocks, right? And um, I love the I love the fins on this. The, the heatsink fins. You know how they're curved. You can't really see in this picture. Yeah, it's hard to see that. Yeah. But it looks so cool. This is the coolest looking amplifier. You know, it's just I, I think it's the coolest looking amplifier in the world. But there's a lot of other cool amps. You know. But uh, yeah, you can go to the next slide. Okay, wow. That, so yeah, this is the Focal Room. The Focal Room is great. Now here's um, the Cora, Cora yeah. 826Ds with some uh, 600D, 600S subwoofers. There's some sealed 12s. And I thought th this sounded really good. Uh, this is like a five channel system. Or What I thought was interesting, these have an Atmos module built in the top. I think I have a close up of it in the next slide. Yeah. Hold on. So here's the, the Atmos module built in the top of those speakers. What's interesting about this, like, see those fins, right? Yeah. That they, they, that should do, in theory, a better job of reflecting the sound upward because well, a problem a lot of those Atmos modules have is that okay, they're using like a four or five inch driver to you know power the uh, Atmos chan like sound field right on, on the yep. top of these speakers. The problem is that small of a driver and, and a tweeter is gonna um it's gonna project sound at a very wide angle right and so a lot of that sound is gonna hit you the listener yep that's what i heard with them yeah before before it reflects off the sound right and that ruins everything it ruins everything so this is a, a strategy that should help ameliorate that is Are there you, a tweeter there too or is it just a full range driver i uh think it's full range i think i don't i know I th it looks like a tweeter though it looks like a tweeter i I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, that cone, the, the center cone, it doesn't look like a tweeter. It just looks like a dust cap. Well, they always, uh, Focal uses these inverted uh, dome tweeters. True. So that that yeah. looks like a Focal tweeter. So, but I, I, but these are the, for those who want to check, these are the Cora 826 D speakers, right? And, you know, that'll, the, the details will be on their page. But I thought this was a cool strategy to like um, help, help get across that bouncy house affect better you know yeah i mean it's they've they are getting better than manufacturers at, at making these speakers control the dispersion and if you get this if you get the speaker at least a little bit above seated ear level then it could do a convincing job of giving you a height effect at least in a pretty narrow sitting area but still much yeah, better than the junk that we heard the first generation where they just didn't do anything to control dispersion. They use that cheap Dolby driver. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I mean, well, I, Focal actually, I think most most manufacturers of these Atmos, these speakers of the Atmos are still kind of, it's still kind of like a uh, afterthought for them. It's, yeah. like, it's kind of like a feature, like something to check on a feature list, right? And they're not really taking it seriously, but this shows me that uh, Focal is really actually taking it seriously, right? They want a good experience, right? And so like, they're a good manufacturer. Like this is, this is evidence of some real engineering, if you ask me. So I'm looking at that. Yeah, I'm looking at a better top view of that speaker, and it looks like it's a single driver. Like, So that centerpiece might be a tweeter, or it just might be a full-range driver. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure, but um, the speaker sounded good. There, there was an Amos demo running, but I didn't. I wasn't in the great spot to really hear it, so I can't judge how... I just thought this is like a neat little engineering detail that I, you know, kind of like bring to people's attention. This gotcha. shows, yeah. Here's the clips. God, Klipsch, those are huge. Gene, the those hell? are huge. 
those are the clips jubilees right they're basically the uh and the jubilees have been around for a while but kind of an informal yeah exactly <laughs> that's fun well not necessarily because there were some less expensive speakers this year but these weren't them these are the clips jubilees these are thirty six thousand dollars a pair right and they're kind of a new addition to the heritage line although the jubilees have always been kind of around as an informal speaker it's been, it always was like a modification of the uh less not the lascalas but the uh what are the clips horns yeah the, the clips horns right the, this just take removes the top part of the clips horn which is the kind of two horns and and just puts one large huge horn in place of the, that double horned like little tweeter horn and mid horn yeah. of, from the clips horns and this turns into a two-way speaker which is bound to be, I think it's going to be better than the the uh, clip horns, right? J just from a like a design perspective, but um, yeah, it's this is just. A, and, I and what the hell is behind all those grills? Is it like twelve inch drivers are all around the speaker or something? I believe it's a single fifteen inch driver lo loading like a huge base bin, like those base bins you normally see at like uh, Pro Audio, um, yeah, and and like live sound reinforcement. It's like that kind of subwoofer, right? So this is um, it's it's a folded horn bass bin, like just did like. Get, a, did you get to hear them? Yes, yeah, I did hear them, but I didn't listen to them for very long. <laughs> I was kind of in and out of the room, right? Because like, I I wanted to see more of the show, right? So I I mean, here's okay. I should say that. Um, for trade shows, I don't really try to make judgments on the sound. Yeah. Based on the equipment, I don't say, well, this equipment sounded good or that. I don't I don't attribute whatever I was hearing to the equipment because these things, these these setups, they're they're put up in, in like less than a day, right? And there's a lot of different equipment that's working together. And who knows what something could be going wrong, right? Or yep. something could be going right that's not normal, right? I, I can't make a I don't make a judgment for whatever happens. So like I, I thought they sounded okay, but I wasn't in there for very long. So I don't I'm not So we might have to get them to send you a pair so you can measure them and right. <laughs> you know, I'll have them send you a pair. <laughs> you no, deal no. with those things, okay, Gene? I, those gotta be like two hundred pounds each. Oh, no, they, they look like they weigh more than two hundred pounds. Yeah, but they're all wood. I mean, yeah, they're probably more than two hundred. Actually, you're right. Yeah. That's two hundred. That they're more than that, but yeah. So you, we can go to the next slide. And now this what is, the heck? yeah, these are weird. These are the uh, Aries Surat Auroras. They're an, are brand new. These are their like world debut at Expona. It's uh, from Aries, a, a manufacturer based out of Cyprus. And uh, this is a very unusual design. Like, um, let, let me try to explain this to you. Okay, so like you have that, that horn. Obviously, they're horn loaded, right? That's mm -hmm. just a mid range horn in the center, that big gaping like, like yeah. hole, right? And the tweeters see that those tubes on the top. Like They're firing um, sideways. Yeah, that's a horn loaded, like horn loaded aluminum tweeter on the top, right? And on, on every side of the uh the subwoofer, I mean on, on every side of the speaker enclosure is a 12 inch subwoofer, every side, right? Right. So like I have more pictures that I'll get uh like go to the next slide. Um yeah, okay. Now this is a look at the inside of the speaker, see. So like every every side has like a subwoofer oh driver. God, those are it. serious drivers. Yeah, they're they're these twelve inch. I think they're like they're not like like subwoofers really, more like mid woofers, like mid bass drivers, right? So like they pr play a pretty. Um, so I these think, things are massive. That picture didn't look like it was that big of a speaker. These are big speakers. These Holy. are big speakers. Yeah, and, and and if you look, what is interesting about this is that the, everything kind of like is focused on the the uh the center of the uh compression driver right so there's a compression yeah. driver thing and everything is kind of time aligned to the, the 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 where the compressor driver diaphragm is right so there's really a lot of time alignment going on here and uh i think they're using an active dsp system you know but but physically there's a lot of time alignment as well as as um you know active like uh d digital time alignment so like I don't know the cost of these speakers. I didn't get that, but I'm sure they're very expensive. Everything in the room is really expensive. Um, I mean, how did it sound? It sounded fine. Like again, I don't want to make judgments, right? Well, I, I didn't. I wasn't bothered by anything. So there's there's a big, huge ribbon tweeter in between yeah. these two things that are acting like a horn, right? It's weird how they're just they're not. Are they 
supposed to fire at the listener? But... Yeah. Yes, kind of. So you of. have to position the speaker in a way that you can it fires rotate at... these. You yeah. can rotate. Oh, okay. Them. So like they can fire at wherever you kind of like in that direction, right? But like someone's saying they're one hundred thirty-five thousand. I don't know if that's each or a pair, but probably a pair. I don't. I talked to the guy about them a lot, but I didn't even get the price. <laughs> you know, I was kind of like, you know, doing a lot, right? So like, uh, I I missed some details, but you can go online. I don't even think these have a website. These this is the world debut of these, and there's no product page for these so yeah oh you know what? here's a nice transition okay going from the, these crazy you know uh design go to the next slide here's the polk and denon room and here's yeah. the l200s right so they're going from 135 thousand dollars speak to what seven or eight hundred dollars right right so and actually this it sounded fine you know the legends are really good speakers i reviewed the r700s as you know yeah really good speakers for the money right Re truly really good speakers and these are the bookshelves and it sounded great in there I mean, it was a very simple setup right they had the uh what was that that uh integrated amp they have the uh uh the, oh, the, the PMA? a110 no i think it's the pma 1600 oh okay i think yeah i mean it's, it's like a two thousand dollar integrated amp and they have an sacd player there they're both, they're both denon products yeah right? the turntable and uh there's a, a denon turntable and it was just these little bookshelf speakers and these inexpensive bookshelf speakers and they sounded fine right they sounded really good so like it it, it kind of sh goes to show you that sound quality isn't really right it, it's not always related to price <laughs> in yeah. fact it's i i want to say i almost want to say it seldom is right but you know you you can get better speakers if you spend more money but these are a great a great example of how to get great sound without spending a fortune right most of the cables at the show cost, cost more than the speakers yeah yeah exactly so like so that was cool here's here's the kibas system i always thought this this i think they're italian manufacturer i, I feel like it's war of the worlds or something like the the pods are coming out of the ground that's exactly what i was you know that's exactly what i was i was i knew you were going to say that i knew it and because <laughs> that's it occurred to me too they had like like the pods from world of the worlds right? especially the shadow Oh, it's so creepy, right? <laughs> it sounded good though. I mean, it's they sounded good. I always thought this is an Italian company. I've you know I've heard a lot of their speakers. I always thought they were pronounced Cabasse. No, it's Cabas. So uh -huh. like that's that's kind of weird. And these are actually these are kind of cool. Now these are um, a tri-coaxial, right? I thought I, I thought the term would be triaxial, but that's not quite right if you think about it because coaxial means everything centered on on one point. Not three things are centered on one point, but everything, right? right. So like, so like you actually, these are a four-way speaker. So you have a tweeter in the middle, a little uh, mid-range driver, and then a, a, a upper bass driver. And then the back, you have a 12-inch sub on the back of that sphere, right? Kabasi yeah. has a theory that it, it, uh, the sphere is the best form for a loudspeaker. And they may well be right. I am i haven't studied the issue that much. But what's, what's cool about these is that the wires are being threaded through those legs and there's an amplifier and preamp and the whole system and and the base of the stand right so it, so it, this is an entire sound system right here and all the electronics are in this the base of the stand mm. and so that was a pretty cool design so you got no there's no wires you know that except you just plug it in you know how and, much and, were these oh these are thirty thousand. Thirty k. Thirty k. Thirty k for a war of the world speaker they're pretty cool I, I remember Kabasi brought their huge speakers. I don't, I mean, I, I still say Kabasi. It's Kabas, right? Yeah. But I, one time they brought their uh, like $180,000 speakers, which are like these, but way bigger, right? Way, like the size of beach balls, right? And that was, was one crazy system. And that used 18 inch drivers on the back. Oh, so wow. that was, that was interesting. So yeah, the, uh, you can go to the next slide. So here's like a smaller version of that. I think these are, these are, okay. Those were called, the ones you just saw were called the, the Pearl Pellegrinos. Those are 30 K a pair. These are called just the Pearls. And these are 7,000 a pair. And these are uh, powered speakers. And you can just plug your source directly into them. They do all the processing and amplification. And this is the back of that speaker, by the way. I'm, I'm not sure if I, I threw in a front but but it would look like the others, you know, just right. smaller. And I, but this is a three-way speaker, actually. So this is kind of a cool speaker. It's a full a full sound system in this like thing the size of a basketball, you know. 
it's pretty cool, right? But it's not super cheap, but none of these things are, right? Except for those polks. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you can go to the next slide. Um, oh, that's this, the front of it, right? No, 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 no. This is um, this is a different system. This is a a two point one system. Oh, okay. So they, I thought this was pretty cool. I think this is, this is about three thousand dollars, right? The the middle orb is a subwoofer, and the little like things on the sides are just um the baby orbs are just the like little speakers, like little satellite speakers. And I think it sounded actually pretty good. The system, right? I think it would be a, a great system for like a desktop PC system. I mean, a really good a desktop PC system if you don't have a lot of like real estate on your desktop, right? Yeah. This is a really good system, I think. Like I liked it. So I thought it was worth I thought it was worth mentioning, but you know, a little expensive at 3000. Okay. And yeah. this thing. Yeah. This is an amp, right? This thing is probably the largest amplifier they had there. This is called the the Gryphon or Griffin. I think it's a Griffin because What, of, what manufacturer is this? It's, it's it's from Griffin. Oh, and okay. it's called the Apex. I think this is their monoblock amplifier. This is a hundred thousand dollars. God, it's pure class A. It makes oh, um two hundred twenty-five watts at eight ohms, four hundred fifty at four ohms, eight hundred eighty at two ohms, and one thousand six hundred ninety watts at one ohm. Right. So like, it's a crazy, crazy thing, right? So you would need four kilowatts to power that thing if it's class A. Yeah, you. Yeah, it was just draw. It would be such a resource <laughs> hog. You you would need, you need a, a dedicated reactor. Amp. Yeah, you need a thirty amp dedicated line just for this this amplifier. Wow. It weighs four hundred and fifty pounds. It's three feet deep and two feet wide, right? Yeah. It's it was quite a sight, right? I mean, I, I you know if I had a hundred thousand dollars, I wouldn't blow it on an amp, but I, you know what? Of, I would love to do. I would love to take that amp. And put it next to like a Purify Class D, and do a blind test and see if anyone prefers that amp. Yeah, I mean they might if it's like a cold day out. You yeah, could save on like warm their room up. Yeah, you could save on heating bills. So like that would be cool, but still, you're not saving right. on heating bills because you're using that much power. <laughs> you're dissipating so. Oh, much you're power. right. You know you're right about that. Actually, this would be a pretty poor, an inefficient heating solution. That's for yeah. sure. And also with those like those purify modules, you could buy like, you know, like fifty of those for the price of one of those. Oh yeah, there. and still buy us Tesla while you're at it. Yeah, <laughs> or, or or an actually cool car because I don't exactly I'm not a Tesla. <laughs> yeah, you won't find me in a Tesla, so don't worry about that. Okay, here's the new some new magna pans they're making. Um, this is kind of a little hidden room, right? They were they weren't really advertising this room, but they were having you know. If you if you caught the right rap, they say, "Oh, did you check the the MagnaPan room out?" So here's the new like MagnaPan have the LRS speakers. It's their lowest kind of the smallest speaker of the line, and these are the new ones called the LRS pluses, right? Right. And and uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to mention this is this is like they actually had a 2.1 system going. They had some subs running on these dipole subs. They use the array of like open baffle six and a half inch bass drivers, right? And they they kind of had like a uh, demonstration of with and without the subs, right? And I thought I thought these would sound really thin, right? Without the subs, I thought they wouldn't have much bass because it's a big. It's, I mean, it's a small planar speaker, right? You wouldn't expect that's not going to have a lot of displacement. But in my opinion, I thought without the subs, these had the most balanced bass of any uh, exhibit in the whole show. They just had the best, like the most. Every uh, every other exhibit, the bass was over the top. Everyone, right? Yeah. And like it was just so. I guess the rooms were really loading the bass, but these sounded the bass sounded right, right? Without the subs, when they turned on the subs, I thought that bass sounded a little thick, right? But like that was interesting. That that it, it, I I thought it was worth um, mentioning just as in contrast to the rest of the exhibits where the bass was just every every room had the bass running hot, all of them, right? So like, and and these the bass actually sounded natural. So like. So for all the p people who say like, oh, audiophiles prefer, you know, fidelity and linearity. No, no, because they all want hot bass and everybody loved all, <laughs> all the crazy bass, right? Like, so that's, that's that. That's what this kind of like um, illustrated to me. But, huh. but anyway, the speakers sounded nice, actually. I, I like these speakers. How much were these a pair? Oh, yeah. These are uh, about just a hair under $1,000 a pair. I mean, that's pretty reasonable considering. 
yeah, it's, those are good speakers. Like, I, I think we should probably try to get some in for review because they're very peculiar. Speakers. I don't know how I'd measure these, right? Because you can't measure them like a normal speaker. Yeah. Right? But I think it would be make for an interesting review anyway. So we should maybe think about getting some in for a review but sometime, you know. But th right now, there, there's like a five-month backlog on these things. So you can't get them right away if you order right. one. Okay, these were the, uh, what are these called? Okay, these are a Polish speaker called the, <sighs> okay, I got it. This is a weird word, okay? <clears throat> Hold it. Malbork Warsaws. That's it's a strange word, isn't it? Uh Malbork Warsaws, right? And like, you know, there's it's kind of a modular almost design. It's I guess it's not really modular since the whole thing is one system, but they they separate all the compartments to, to the individual drivers, right? And I think it's all the aluminum, right? So it's a big aluminum kind of artwork. And it sounded fine, but um, it, it was just something to see this, this whole, the speaker system. It was a, it's just a cool, like, uh, looking I'm getting kind of a Wally vibe out of this. Yeah. They did look like <laughs> Wally or Johnny like, five or something. Yeah. Like a, like a science fiction speaker. Yeah. Robot. Yeah, it did. Yeah. You can go to the next slide. That was just kind of a cool looking speaker. Of course, you per know, listen. these guys. Yeah. They had the, the per, per listen had, the. S7Ts up, right? Just, they were just killing it like they always do, you know. And uh, I, you know, I like I did a review of these like I think a year ago, and I I missed. I had to include them in here because I just I like it was a reun. I, I was reunited with these speakers. I, I loved so much, you know, having. So like um, but the, I think what's what's new in the per listen. Well, you know these. I don't have to, you know. You you just posted a review yep. of these, so we don't have to go too much in depth of these. But go to the next slide. Okay. Uh, what Perlison brought, which was interesting, uh, here's an in-wall, okay? They're developing an in-wall, like in-wall um, kind of like partners to all their like outboard speakers, right? And what impressed me is like the entire cabinet is like this thick aluminum, right? This thing was heavy. Like the back box, right? And the and the front baffle was just a, a thick aluminum. The build quality was crazy, right? I don't know how much this weighed, but it was a lot, right? And that's just their like smallest in-wall speaker, right? I wouldn't even try, want to try to pick up their larger in walls, right? It was like the build quality was crazy with these things, right? Really. Yep, it really is. Yeah, that's that's a heavy, heavy duty in wall speaker, right? But it's per listen, so you know. And I'm sure that those are probably the same price as the their uh, S4Bs, right? These are like the in wall variant of the S4Bs. They're called the 4i LCRSs. Right. Yeah, these are pro I don't know the price. You know, I'm, I think those are probably ten grand a pair, right? But yeah, I know their bigger ones are 10 grand each. So that probably sounds about right. Yeah. Or maybe eight grand. I, I don't know. I should get it confirmed. But um, yeah, they're, they're coming out with these. And th this is a heck of an in wall. Right. So I, I thought this was worth showing. Yep. Okay. Now you want to see some amplifiers. Look at these. This is. um. Those are Von Schweikart speakers, right? Yeah, these are the Von Schweikart Ultra 7s. They're 180,000 a pair. Um. The amplifiers are VAC statement 425 or 452 IQ music box. Yeah, they're actually VAC is made in Florida. They're made about an hour and a half from where I live. Yeah, so these are mono blocks. And here's like these obviously these speakers being biamped, right? With these yep. four mono blocks. So these are 75 k each mono block. So that's what three hundred thousand dollars worth of amplification there. <laughs> Insane. Right? Like all two amps, like I'm sure they're class. And the day. cables, if I'm that's that Von Schweikert branded cable from that. I forgot the name of the company, but those cables are almost probably a hundred grand at least. They're insane. But you know what? Yeah. Go, go to the next slide. Or actually, the next slide, I think I have the close up of the those crazy amplifiers on this. You I mean, you could just feel the heat coming off these things, right? Like getting close to them. Oh, nice. It was nice and warm. Like I wanted to get a, you know, a, put a marshmallow on a stick, you know, and like you know, just have some s'mores, right? But next, what's funny is go to the next slide. There's <laughs> cable the, lifters. I know they have all these cable lifters, right? This like system, this ultra expensive system, and they didn't really put this. All the cables are full off the cable lifters because the cable lifters can't really hold these, right? <laughs> That's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, like and like it's like and like I was oh I was mad because like I you know I was expecting the the, the pure beautiful sound of these speakers and amps, but it was all ruined. The sound is ruined because the cables weren't on the cable lifters, and it ruined everything. Gene, I, I've got to tell you. I that. bet it must have compressed everything. I'm surprised they don't have an audiologist come in and like precisely place 
those little lifters in key locations to balance the forces of the cables and reduce the strand jumping. Yeah, they've got a they yeah, I know why yeah, it's just there there was not a lot of attention to detail here and it ruined the sound. So I was disappointed in this exhibit, no. So that's that's why that room didn't sound so great. Right. Um actually it sounded pretty good, but it better for the I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment there was in there, right? Um, the heck, the, don't tell me that this is a four way speaker and they separated the drivers that far apart from each other. They did. This is come a, on, yeah. Okay, the, this a is a joke, right? This is a Korean company called Orca Style, and uh, I they want to do something like I mean, you kind of what was that? I think it was a Swiss company called Goldmund, right? Uh, -huh. Goldman has similar speakers. Do you know? Do you know about Goldman speakers? They have this similar kind of build. I think product. so. Yeah. And, and uh, but they're really expensive. So here's a Korean company doing pretty much the same kind of thing. Oh but my God. Can yeah, you there's a, how that alu measures aluminum and steel cabinets, right? Just just so heavy, right? I think these are like 250 kilograms, which is what almost 500 pounds or something like that. It's up so there. Like, yeah. Yeah, these are really heavy duty speakers, right? Ex you know. Obviously, the acoustic theory here for speaker design is probably a bit eccentric, right? It sounded fine, you know. It sounded okay, but um, it was just kind of a strange design from a new company. They they don't have a distributor, and they don't really have United States pricing. Um, they 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 were there looking for a distributor, but they were like, for the equivalent Goldman system, these are way way less. Goldman is like hundreds of thousands of dollars. These are only tens of thousands of dollars. So if you wanted. I just don't understand why they wouldn't have put the, just move the drivers closer together. I don't get the reasoning for that. A lot of these speaker companies are operating on their kind of own, like design theories, right? Yeah, from an these, ivory tower or something. These people have their own design theories and so many others do. And like, you know, it's not one that, like, it's not how I would design a speaker, but the sound is fine in there, right? I mean, I, how they measure, I don't, it would be measured probably pretty weird, right? But yeah, um, it sounded decent, right? I mean, like I said, I don't want to make judgments at a trade show, but like, the, actually, the guy, the, the guy who's um, kind of like uh, <laughs> trying to propagate this brand. He, Thanks to uh, JT Lord, I'm spending five dollars to say what the hell. <laughs> yeah, the, the well, the guy who um, I think one of the guys who who are like uh, the founders of this brand is like uh. He was a conductor for an orchestra and he wants to speakers to sound like an orchestra. But I think his acoustic theories are a little bit like odd, right? But mm -hmm. it sounded fine. And, and I don't know, the, you know, there's probably people who like this, this. Well, I'm sure it sounds okay if you're in one spot, but it's yeah. move over to the left or right and you're in trouble. Yeah, they're gonna have some lobing for sure. But at, yeah. they were using some pretty steep crossover slopes, if I remember right. Uh -huh. And so, um, it was an unusual, you know what? There's a lot of eccentric designs at these shows and like none, none we would say are like, are, are based on the science that we know, right? But I kind of like all, and these are just one, right? there's a lot of these kind of like designs operating on like kind of strange, it's just some close up, right? On strange like like theories, right? And like, well, I think it's cool, right? That to have all these, you know, odd, or at least unique speaker designs. It's one of the things I like about these these kind of shows and like audio in general. Even though it might not produce the best measuring speaker, it still sounded fine, right? So like, um, yeah, that was that was a uh, one that I thought was kind of cool. Yeah, see, here's another one that's kind of odd, right? But I think they're operating on a more normal, like you know, loudspeaker design theory, right? Where the drivers are kind of spaced closer together, right? Um, these are called the Estelan Forzas, and they're 163K a pair, and like crazy cabinet, really heavy, really just works of art more than they are loudspeakers, but they sounded fine, right? I like the music they were playing at this this exhibit. So like, um, they, they just look cool, right? Like almost like the Kef Blades, but I think they look cooler than the Kef Blades, but they're way more expensive than the Kef Blades, you know? They seem like they're really tall. I mean, was that just the picture? This is a low angle picture okay. so they're they are kind of tall but the tweeter is about maybe just a little bit above where you'd have your listening position your head your ears at the listening position so like um 
they they didn't sound bad. I don't. I mean, if you look at the design, it doesn't necessarily have any big problems on the face of it, right? That I would say, right? So like, here's your base drivers at the bottom, and your mids are really close to the tweeter, so it should it should measure fine, you know? Yeah, they were they they sounded good, but like I said, I don't want to make a, ju a judgment yeah. at a trade show. So oh, I like, was wrong about those cables that. Um von schweigert room they are one hundred and sixty three thousand dollars for the cables i said there were about a hundred thousand oh yeah i mean <laughs> i don't there, there's just too, too much equipment to all these rooms i didn't really try to like you know <laughs> joke. Yeah, how ridiculous that is it's, it's ridiculous yeah i mean well people like that right they sell them so i don't know what to say <laughs> yeah no this is pretty cool i like these are works of art and some of these speakers are just works of art like here's another speaker that's are these that's plasma cool. speakers no these are um these are like okay. See the tops. Okay, the, almost looks like, like a, uh, I don't know what you'd call that. The, the tweeter is like a cylinder. The, the diaphragm is in the shape of a cylinder in the center there, and there's it's connecting to two woofers that are kind of upside down, right? Uh -huh. are, are, are like reversed the way you'd normally see a woofer like in a in a loudspeaker. So like you can see the uh, basket is connected, to, and the motor is connected to the tweeter, right? And I guess it's using some kind of transmission line for that whole shape there. And uh, and it's, these are obviously omnidirectional speakers because of the, the, of the way that tweeters arranges. And it has some super secret patent on the, the, the tweeter. I couldn't really get the guy to talk, talk about how much, how they actually worked, but this, the exhibit sounded fine, you know, for an omnidirectional you know, system. On how the, much are these? These okay. These are called the Bayes Audio Carante. I think Carante or Carante, and these are sixty thousand a pair. Sixty thousand dollars for what looks like a paperclip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a pretty big paperclip. But they sounded fine, you know. And omnidirectional speakers are generally pretty expensive, you know. You know yeah. Hi-fi the, the, the ones. There's there's omnidirectionals are way more expensive than these. I'm not going to say like sixty thousand is a great deal for any speaker, but you could spend more you know? <laughs> yeah. but I, I think the electronics that looks pretty cool you know that that big amplifier in the there's middle. an interesting comment i this i partially agree with this to some extent you are paying for for industrial furniture design. yeah, yeah industrial paying, design yeah like kef had those speakers are kind of like remember those uh, what were they called those big chrome speakers that kef had uh the, not the blades no not the blades they were they these were two hundred thousand dollars they had a big huge metal cabinet um the muons do you, do you remember the kef muons? oh yeah yeah that was just art right it wasn't a speaker it was i mean it, it you could you could use them as a speaker but basically they were art and like a lot of these speakers are kind of like that oh here's the avant-garde acoustics oh trio, my goodness trio g3s yeah these are pretty these are i think around two hundred thousand. so in the center there's those two bass bin those are folded horns in the center and then they're like metal they're like aluminum and these big old uh, uh, metal horns, right? This is just a. And you know what? See the the right side of that photo, right? These uh, are so close to the listening position. Okay, I, I would think you would need to put these in a large room, but they didn't. They put them in a small room, and you had about like maybe what eight, ten feet from these speakers, right? So like, ouch. it was weird, right? I wouldn't have done that, but they did, and. I guess they want, you know, they like it. There was only the one row of seating and it was against the back wall and it was really close to these speakers. I look at that and I think earplugs. Th they didn't sound bad tonally. I wouldn't, but again, like I keep on saying, I wouldn't want to make a judgment from a trade show because mm. I'm sure there's a lot of like. That's, little... that's James's disclaimer that he doesn't want to give anyone a black eye. I can't make a judgment at a trade show. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, that's, I don't because, and it wouldn't be fair if I, I tried. I know a lot of people do, right? But you, there, there could be a hundred things going on that could mess up the sounder. You know, you know what the stupid thing is? Um, okay, a lot of these super uber high end speaker like sound systems, they were playing vi like messed up vinyl records as the source, right? Mm. <laughs> or reel to reel. Yeah. Or something oh, like I've, that. I've been to trade shows where they were spinning Grace Jones records. I was like, yeah, really? like it's Come not, on. yeah, like whatever, whatever the, the speaker or, or electronics could do, you're not hearing it because the source is so badly compromised. At least they weren't playing Yoko Ono. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got a couple of super chats here. 
GPG game. Hello, Gina James. What is the chance James will have a massive subwoofer accident and turn into the super villain deep base? Uh, I, I if I have a subwoofer accident, I'm probably I'm just gonna go to the hospital or die. <laughs> I, I should you know what? I'll, I'll I uh I, I could relate a funny story. Okay, so when I reviewed the uh, I did have a massive subwoofer accident once. I reviewed the SVS PB16 Ultras. Yeah. I guess this one was a massive accident, but like there was just so horrible to deal with, right? Because there was the worst subwoofer I'd have to deal with. Not not because of the performance, but because the, the entire right. thing was covered in like gloss black finish, right? Yet it weighed 700 pounds and it was all rounded. So it was like carrying a, 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 a not seven, I said 176 pounds, not 700 pounds. Yeah, right? I was going to say 700 pounds. What no, are not, you talking about? I can't about? carry that, right? Yeah. So like I had to have help carrying them, right? I was I was loading them into my car after I was done testing them, right? And I was taking special measures not to put a scuff on this like, you know, 176 pound like bar of soap for all the grip you could get on it, right? It was just crazy, right? And whoops, I, I dropped and crushed the corner and messed up that poor, two, like then $2,500 sub. Like SVS is very understanding of it. So they were kind of like, like, yeah, that happens. We understand it's but like, yeah, I, I kind of screwed up a, at least you didn't drop it on your foot. No, I'm not. No, I, I, I just bashed the corner and like really screwed up that sub. It, it was yeah. functionally, it was still fine, but the obviously the the finish was like it became B stock. There's another another super chat from Caleb Fisher. My favorite system was the Vivid Audio on the top floor. Focal sounded really bad for some reason. Vivid Audio. I mean, we we were. I was so close to measuring uh, our, our to um reviewing a vivid, vivid audio system right before they they had they sent us a pair of some vivid audio i think they were called g uh, G g2s or something like yeah. that and and they had them delivered to chicago right to a dealer who is going to deliver it from us but then right then the pandemic broke out and everybody started like battening down the hatches right and we just decided not to go through with it because they just well we, we could just we were, we were going to sell these so they just decided instead of doing the review Oh yeah. They just delivered them to the guy who bought them. And so like we were so close to doing a, a really cool and, and vivid. They always measure super flat, really wide distortion. I mean, not, really wide dispersion and super flat. <laughs> That's a funny Dang, comment. The so cherry funny. on top of the cake. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> I mean, I, I believe she, she would probably belong. That sort of music would belong. Mm. Some music Yoko music. would buy these speakers. <laughs> That's great. There were some stranger speakers than these. Uh, these are pretty strange. These are just oh my goodness. really over the top, especially with the room that room. Okay, these okay here's that line array that you had in the cover photo, right? Yeah, these are called the Credo Credo Cinema LTMs. They're two hundred thousand a pair. Um, they're using thirty-two tweeters, 14, 14 four-inch mid-rangers, and four twelve-inch bass drivers on the side. That's kind of hard to see in this picture, but in, in each side of these speakers, there's there's twelve-inch um, bass drivers, and so. It's a line array. Line arrays are line arrays, right? Yeah. <laughs> they always image big, right? Everything that line array it does big. Yeah. It can't it can't do anything small. And I, I think I think it's cool, but um it, it sounds cool, but it's not how I'd want my system to sound all the time, right? Because it, right. it makes everything sound larger than life, right? I think some people re really like that effect, but it doesn't image it doesn't image with precision, you know. It can't mm -hmm. You, you can't get anything precisely imaged with these uh line any line array that I've ever except for cbt line arrays which were like yeah. almost emulated a point source kind of like uh you know speaker so that's that's how they got away with it but normal line, line arrays always blow up they blow up the sound stage to like be big you know yeah so that's just kind of a sampling yeah, yeah all 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 line arrays do have they have I, I don't want to say horrible imaging just big imaging. They don't image yeah. with precision. They just image everything like like you're at the IMAX, right? Everything sounds like it's IMAX, and it it's 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 kind of cool sometimes. But you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't want that to be my system all the time. It's like I would say it's a nice place to visit, but you wouldn't want to live there, you know, <laughs> for line arrays. So like yeah, yeah. So like I guess this is the end of the little slideshow. I I whipped this together at the last moment, right? Yeah, because like I was like exhausted right <laughs> and like uh, i only had a few hours to put it all together right so like all those pictures together so like um you know one thing we, uh, we wanted to mention was um 
Oh, I should have had an image of them. I, I couldn't get a picture of that tiger fox. Do you remember you know that tiger fox thing I showed you and Matthew? That uh, thing that you sit in. It, it's not a speaker. It's a like a like a little uh, like a, almost a folder that you sit in that wraps around you, right? It's like putting a room within a room, right? Yeah, yeah, I remember you sending them something about that. Yeah, uh, I think people should check that out. It's, it's. I think maybe we should probably discuss that on a, on a different, because I didn't get any pictures of it, and I couldn't get any, any them to talk about it too much, right? But it was a weird acoustic demo. It's like a, a an acoustic room you put inside a room, right? A little, little room that maximizes early reflections, and I really want to get Matthew one of those, because um, as an acoustician, I think you'd have a few things to say about them. It's called hmm. the, the tiger fox. Um, what, let, let me see if I can look it up real fast. Tiger fox uh, audio. Yeah, the tiger tiger fox immerse three hundred and sixty. So if you want to go to, uh, if you want to learn about this thing, it's called the tiger fox three hundred and sixty. Go to tigerfox three hundred and sixty dot com, and um, it's just a crazy. It's it's a it's like a little chamber that you're putting yourself in yeah that, that there you go and like they had that at the show and like it it maximized early reflections and it had this really a cool effect of like spreading the sound stage out so wide right but it, it it did actually retain the center imaging but all the like imaging off the center was kind of like blown outward right and it really imaged really widely um it was kind of cool. Again, a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. And they, mm -hmm. and they were making some pretty over-the-top claims about what this thing was doing. But acoustically, it was doing something. It wasn't doing nothing, and it, and it did play with the imaging a lot. And like, um, yeah, like, and it wasn't too expensive either. I think it was like three or four hundred bucks for this thing. You know, like, it's we got to get Matthew one of these. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it was kind of fun. It was kind of fun, but. Not exactly high fidelity, not a not a high fidelity kind of thing, but a fun thing, you know. So yeah, so that slideshow was just a sampling of some of the things that um, we saw at Expona, and like I, I included a lot of the oddities, but in my written coverage, I think I'll focus on like just the normal stuff that I thought was like higher performing or whatever, you know, like just like straight straight up like normal things that people would buy, right? Our readership would buy, not eccentric systems, you know. Someone was asking if you had a chance to check out Emotiva, ELAC, CAF, or HSU. HSU was there? No, they weren't. HSU oh, okay. was not there. They were there for the past few shows, but not this year. Yeah. Um, and and uh, this year, they, uh, they didn't have as many exhibitors as they had in the past few years because, um, you know, it's just we're getting just past this pandemic thing. And, like, there's all kinds of supply issues and all kinds of weirdness going on. So, like, they're just kickstarting these shows again, you know? And, like... I guess I guess the audio industry got out of the habit of doing trade shows, right? And so now we have to get back in the habit of doing trade shows because it's been like two years since like the last trade show, you know, yeah. like two year absence of any trade shows. I didn't go to the Emotive room. I didn't even go to the ELAC or CAF room. I, they, all the stuff they had there was stuff I've already heard before. So Yeah, I mean, if it's not new product, we try to prioritize on the new stuff. Yeah, I, I just try to like hit the new the, kind of the new stuff or the interesting stuff. Or did you go see that PS Audio super speaker that they came out with? You know what? I forgot. <laughs> no, I uh, didn't. Like, it's not really high in my part. I, I, it, it's there. There was a lot of eccentric speakers there, and I think that would be an, an, an eccentric. I mean, I had a lot of pictures, right? I, I was only a sampling of the, some of the things that I had, and there's a lot of. Oh, they weren't there. Okay, yeah, I I thought they were on the exhibitors list, but I didn't see, I didn't make a point of seeing them, but I didn't remember to go check them out. So like, man, you know, I I don't expect those speakers to like be like a, they're not normal, right? And and who knows how, what design theory they're operating on? They're not, mm. they're kind of an eccentric speaker. Speaker, um, are they good? I, I don't know. They're they're not going to conform to any normal speak loudspeaker design or that, that we understand. So like, <laughs> I, and but again, I don't want to make a judgment, right? Without without getting you know spending some time with it and and getting a good look at its objective um, performance. So that's yeah, that's that. 
Well, I think that wraps it up, guys. James, I appreciate you going out there to cover the show as best as you could. Um, I know it's a lot to condense into one little report like this, but hopefully uh, next year the show will pick up and get more vendors and, and you know, maybe we could do a live stream before Expona so we could request what people want to see you cover. And uh, we can get some of that in there as well. So, guys, don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. I appreciate your support. You get direct access to us if you want to ask questions or suggest video topics. And, James, once again, thanks for being here and giving us the straight scoop as soon as when you got it. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, it's been a long day. Though. So if I, I probably got a lot of details wrong in my, like, reported reportage there. Cause like my, my brain is like scrambled eggs right now. Like I've been up for a long time, you know, like, yeah. so like, uh, yeah, maybe I got some of this wrong, but the pictures are cool. Hey, so, you know, whatever. Hey, super chat. Thanks every day for the guys you do much love from Canada. You guys reviews and info are invaluable. Thank you, KB. Appreciate that. Yes, All you. right. That is a wrap. And until next time, my friends.